<laughs> what do you think of that? That was actually a really good piece of production. I know. I know. That's uh, from one of our members, Bon Jovial. Thank you so much for that. That was amazing. Uh, so, yeah, everybody, welcome to another edition of Radio Gunk. And tonight, as you all actually know by now, we have Brent on. And everybody be really, try and be really nice. I, You know, Brent is ready for anything you can throw at him and or that I can throw at him. So we're going to try and do this as... Um, as nicely as is possible. So and you can a ask any question you want. I'm, I'm perfectly fine uh, answering any question. Well, okay. So you can be perfectly fine with answering any question, but I will tell you that the majority of people that are on here think you're going to lie to me. Oh my I'm, god! <laughs> I'm just telling. I'm just telling you how it is. People think that you are. Um, your you have a, a little bit of revisionist history in terms of how kind of things went down and we'll come to that at some point okay. and and they think that you um that you lie and i don't know why that is uh but Me either. yeah <laughs> <laughs> well but you know uh the the thought process is that you know you think the the years on the stern show are the best years that the stern show have ever had lie you think that um that's an, op that's an opinion by the way that is an opinion but it's a it's a it's a it's a bad one to us. Um, a lot of people are a little concerned about what drugs you may or may not be doing. A lot of people are concerned about okay. what's going on with your Twitch channel and <laughs> um, and how many times you guys have been suspended. I did want to start with that, as a matter of fact, and the reason okay. why we're not on Twitch tonight uh, is because somebody highlighted out to me the terms of service on Twitch, and I was not aware of this, but one of the TOSs is... Um, appearing or participating in the stream of a third-party channel if a banned user appears in a third-party channel while being suspended this could cause the ban of the channel that they appear on did you know this yes i did yeah i did oh you did know this okay yeah. so sketchy press is actually the one who told me this and i was like yeah. fuck so that means we can't do it on twitch so can you tell me what what the fuck is going on with your twitch channel why do you continue <laughs> to get suspended uh well uh some of it's my fault, and some of it... No, um, really? I, yeah. Really? So putting your wife on naked whilst playing DMX with the N-word, you didn't think for a hot second <laughs> that that would get you immediately suspended? So putting my wife on naked was a mistake. So <laughs> she... It was a complete mistake. So we had to plug in an extra... Uh, an old camera that we hadn't used in a while. And when she did the setup, she was topless on here because she does the setup. She does all the tech setup. So she does set up topless. She was done doing the tech setup top. She walks around the the, the, the apartment topless or nude all the time. Okay. And she was doing the, she she does the tech setup. She wasn't even gonna she was uh probably not gonna be on camera that much. So she did the tech setup for me, and then as soon as I saw it, you as soon knew. as I saw it, I was like, oh my god. And I stopped the stream immediately. Now, but the, the DMX thing, like I think, well, this is just me. I think if a rap artist is saying that in their song, I don't think that should be a problem. Um, yeah, but you know, you must be heightened aware to the fact, that, same as I am on YouTube, that once I fuck something up, somebody is going to report me. That's just the way people are. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. You, you, you have to, you have to read the fucking room, Brent. I mean, <laughs> naked chick and the N word, never a really good combination. I know the, na the naked chick though was a, it was a, a, it was a complete accident. And I had revised the show to where my wife was go only going to be on camera on Fridays. And I've, got, I, I've changed it completely to uh, more of a news and opinion show. And then on Patreon, I do more of the stuff with uh, with her. So because you can on Patreon, you can say you can talk like adults. So um, I'm going to figure something out. If I don't hear from uh, I talked to the person that signed me at Twitch. If I don't hear back from them by Friday, I'm just going to move over to YouTube and start and, and start building it there and do Patreon. So, okay, so how many times are you able to actually be banned on Twitch before they say to you, okay, this is not working for us? I think, I, I want to say the number is five, five? but there's no, <laughs> there's, there's, no, there's no hard and fast rule. Uh, there's no hard and fast rule. Um, it's it's kind of up to them. And sometimes when they do this and they suspend somebody indefinitely, uh, they do knee jerk and they, they, they will revise it. So I have an appeal in. I do have a contact there that's very high up, and hopefully I'll be able to get that restored. But if not, I will move to YouTube. But it was completely my fault, and uh, I uh, pretty much screwed the pooch on that one. 
Are you okay? That's a very funny word that you just used. I feel like I'm talking to an 80 year old man. Um, were you making any money on Twitch? Because I feel like what was happening to your station, and by the way, on my forum at radiogunk.com, there's actually a, a listening thread now for your show, and it's extremely amusing. I really don't know what's going on half the fucking time, but what a lot of people keep telling me is that. You know, if you see something in the chat you don't like, you ban them. If you see something, you know, and then you kind of go after people on a case by case basis. And I got to believe that after being in this business for, you know, over 20 years at this point, you, you kind of know that people are going to be dicks and you just got to kind of allow it. No, I mean, at what point do you just not, you know, look at people on a case by case basis and say, OK, you're being a cunt to me. Let me let me, you know, get rid of you. Uh, agreed. And um, I will, you know, I'll readily admit this. Like, once I left the Stern Show, like at the end of the Stern Show, um, I had to negotiate my exit agreement with them uh, and pack up my shit and move here like as fast as I possibly could. I had to live with somebody else. Get Wait, my why? Finance. Why? Why? Why did you have to pack up your shit and move as fast as you possibly could? Because uh, COVID was hitting, and I did not want to be in New York City during uh, a pandemic. Okay. I wanted to be. I wanted to be back here in Florida for a number of reasons. One, I'm from here. Number I know. two, one, number two, my parents are here and they're older. Caitlin's parents are here and they're older, and we wanted to be near them. Because remember, at the beginning of this, we didn't know what was going on. The media was scaring the shit out of people, I know. and um, I was worried for my. You know, my dad's eighty-five years old, so I'm. I'm I was kind of worried for my parents, but also. <clears throat> The other thing is, I, I I just I had to get out of there. I, I knew things in New York City and where I was, Jersey City, was going to be really really bad. So um, I don't stick around and, and and find out how bad things can get. Yeah. So the giant elephant in our room um, is, you know, and I will I will I will completely say that I I definitely was one of the people out there saying to everyone that you were fired. And I I'm I kind of am gonna stick by that unless you prove it differently to me. And I will tell you that I, I heard it from more than two people and I heard that it was because of a couple of different things that were happening with you. A lot of it stemming from what happened in LA. And I'm just throwing it out there at you because you uh, need to, you need to know call. exactly you know, where um, I'm coming from. And no, I had no, gotten go a phone call. I had gotten a phone call from somebody I know that you know, and we both know who, um, who said Brent got fired yesterday. And I'm like, wow, what happened? And so they proceeded to tell me what they thought was the scenario. So I am more than happy and more than open to, to hear what, um, what the exit strategy exactly was there. And I'll tell you okay. why I'm going to differ with you when you tell me what, what happened. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, you can differ with me all you want. I was there. I know. <laughs> so, I mean, you can't tell me what my experience is. What, what. Okay. So I'll, I'll just tell you this. Um, I was not happy. Uh, I was not happy being there. I did not want why? to be there, there anymore. Uh, I'm just going to say this, creative differences. I, with With whom? Uh, with uh, Sirius XM and with the organization, I was not happy. I did not want to be there. It is not, <clears throat> it's not what I do. What, what's going on is not what I do. So um, I, my but wife what, and I, but, but, but no, 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 just, 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 uh, just dig into that for a second. What does that mean exactly? I, I can't really get into it. I can't. Why? Like, um, I, because when I negotiated my exit agreement with them, I said that I would not, the only thing that I have is I can, I can talk about, ethically, I would not talk about their business practices, number one. Yeah, okay. Number two, um, I said that I would not, you know, uh, talk bad about anybody at uh, SiriusXM or uh, the Stern Show. So let's take with whom and take names out of it. Okay, um, but then you have somebody like Shuli, who I'm pretty sure left on different terms than you did, you know, out there promoting the himself terms. like, uh, you know, that I'm no holds barred. I'm going to talk what, about whatever I feel like. I'm going to say whatever I think is right and blah, sure. blah, blah. And yet I feel like you, conversely, are just very, very um, close mouth about it. And I'm, I'm not necessarily sure why. Uh, I because I was a United States Marine and truly wasn't, and so my and we my, do thank you for your service. By the way. Oh, well, it was it was an honor to serve this country. Um, so so my um, reasoning is this: uh, I can talk about I can talk about matter of fact I can 
I, I can talk about what I, what went on at Baba's show all I want. I can talk about most of what I want went on at the at the Stern show. But ethically, I just don't talk uh, ill of former employers, especially when with Bubba's show and uh, at, at Howard, uh, I um, left on my own volition because I wasn't happy. I just was not happy. So um, but I, I will back up. So let's back up to what happened in L.A. I definitely was not fired. And I can prove that to you, but the only place that I can prove it to you is in court. Or uh, between you and me, if you ever see me in person, I'll show you the proof. Okay. Um, <laughs> see me in person, I'll be glad on my phone to show you the proof. I've got it. Okay. Um, so... But I want to. But I, I, I just want to throw something else in with the Shuli thing. Shuli has has been so vocal and so out there and getting so much PR, like even on like Fox and all over the place. Mm -hmm. Where you yeah. know he's got a new podcast, he's doing this, he's doing that, and right. you kind of unceremoniously were gone and and never to be spoken of again. And I have to tell you something, and this this comes from the millions of disenfranchised fans that are out there. It's mm -hmm. like you know everybody's so scared to talk about Howard and maybe what an asshole he is behind the scenes and maybe how he treats people behind the scenes and things like that. But can you even recall at any given time anybody he has helped that has left the show or conversely anybody who has has left the show and um, and he's spoken of ever again and he doesn't help anybody who leaves him. So why is everybody so scared to ever talk about who he is or, or what he's really like? I'm just okay, curious I'll, about that. I will. I'll answer that question. And then we're going to back up and talk about LA for a second. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so for, I can't answer for everybody else, but I do know of one person that he, that I don't know that he helped, but he has spoke well of, and that would be Billy West. Um, and Billy Billy's West, a completely different story. <laughs> Extremely talented human being, Amazing. and could could go anywhere at any time. Yeah, and he's uh, obviously he's still working on of his lots own volition. Of so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's 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 an amazing talent. Um, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I said on my show, and I'll tell you this. You know, I think uh, when it comes to Howard, that hurt people hurt people. And I feel like he probably feels like uh, people that leave abandon him. Um, and, I, and I can kind of identify with that, um, with that sentiment. I have an extreme fear of abandonment. So uh, I, I think that, you know, he takes it. Um, personally? Probably take, per, yeah, I think he takes it very but Don't personally. you think that holds people down? Think about the fact that, and, you know, I, I had to look into the history of it. But think about the fact that there are so many people there who have been there. 15, 20, 30 years, you were only able to last there six or seven. We're going to go back to LA. But, you know, the people that last there are fiercely loyal to him. And is it because of fear or is it because of, of almost having like a, a cult like adoration for a man who makes $90 million a fucking year while you make 150? Like, I just don't understand the absolute abject adoration for somebody who I have heard from more than one person ask him, you know, hey, dude, can you give these people, you know, you just you just made $30 million extra from your serious stuff. Maybe you want to, like, take a million and give it out to the guys who work for you. And he said, fuck that. You know what I mean? Like, where's the line for where, you know, the 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 loyalty ends and nobody wants you to be like stuttering John. I'm not asking you to be like that, but I'm just curious where that, where that line is because you're not burning a bridge because he's not going to help you build another fucking bridge. That's kind of what I'm getting at. You know, I, and I, I certainly understand that point. I really do. Like I, I understand your, the, your point. I understand where you're coming from. And, and, and I'm not here to tell you that you're wrong. Um, but me personally, cause I can't speak for everybody else. Of course. Me, per me personally, um, just to give you an idea of who I am, I am a, I'm an extreme libertarian and libertine. So while I may disagree with some of these decisions for what they do with their money or what they do with their life or how they handle their employees even, um, as a libertarian, I always believe that that decision is up to them. And anybody that doesn't like those decisions, I, I walked around Sirius XM and around Bubba's show saying this all the time, nobody's chaining me to my desk. Uh, and I always say that nobody's chaining me to my desk. If I don't like the way an organization is run, then you are free to leave. And kind of that's how I see life. And I kind of, I, 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 I disagree with people's decisions, but they're, it's their decision to make. It's their life. 
All right. So again, we're going to go back to LA, but I want to get just a little bit into the um, organization that is the Stern Show. So, you know, we always pontificate about what we think is going on at that show. And we're always kind of amazed at how many people are needed in the behind the scenes area to do what makes that show a three hour, three day a week show. Um, How many people are in the back office of that show? I would, so I'll just give you a total between, I just know, I don't know the back office specifically, but I know the total is around 85 between video, okay. audio, and production. How insane is that when you have a show like Joe Rogan, who's making the same amount of money, um, who basically has five people behind the scenes? Why does it take so many people to do a, sh- a three hour, three day a week show? I'm, I'm just fascinated by that. That is a great question. <laughs> that is a fantastic question. And, uh, and, and, and one that uh, baffled me sometimes, to be honest with you. Like, I've been what? in radio, this is 2021. So I've been in radio since 93, so 28 years, um, and have never seen anything like that. I mean, that is quite a budget. Like, at Bubba's show, at our max, because we were doing two shows a day, so we had a morning crew and an afternoon crew, besides right. the on-air talent. Our max got to, I think, 23 people. But we had to have mornings and afternoons, and we had a video crew, and... That crew also was our road crew when we went on tour. So they all had multiple jobs. They really were busy at our height at Bubba's show. So uh, that that big of a staff, it, it really it, it really does get um, heavy and fat. So talk to me, talk to me about a staff that big on a Friday afternoon when Howard has already fucking bolted for the Hamptons on Wednesday afternoon, and here we are Wednesday afternoon, Thursday into Friday. And I cannot imagine for the life of me that there is enough work to be parsed out for that amount of people for the amount of of show that is occurring there. Well, there's a lot of post-production that goes on, uh, especially with video. The video team is very busy. Take out Um, video. Just take out video completely. Show only three hours. Take out video, you're down to about 60 people. So, oh, well, that, that <laughs> makes all the sense in the world. <laughs> so, um, tell me what 60 people do on a Thursday and a Friday when Howard so, is gone. So, Thursday, first of all, Thursday, all the people that have to do uh, that have areas of responsibility on the live show, um, there, there's, a, there's a huge meeting because kind of Thursday is the day that your week starts, and Wednesday, Wednesday is the end of your week. And so, Thursday and Friday, well, especially for me because I did a lot of running 101. So I Thursday and Friday um, were the days that I could catch up on 101 stuff, work on the wrap-up show uh, before he passed away. Of course, I, I worked with Jay Thomas, so I'd stay there on Friday till, till 5. But also, um, the, Howard has so much material prepared for him. He, there's no way he could get to it all. So in your areas, like uh, Shuli and I worked together on Whack Pack stuff. I worked on some other type things, some other packages. So I would have to do, go do research, edit those packages, write scripts, uh, and things like that for those interesting packages. So when you hear Howard get into something that is so well prepared. So we spend Thursday and Friday preparing stuff like that, doing free interviews with people hunting. Like one, sometimes on Fridays, we a group of us would go out and hunt for possible people to be on the air, like whack packers. So there's a lot of pre-production that's done when uh, when Howard's not there. But how much uh, of that is used? How much of that is really used? Take out, take out, okay, so from the 12 hours of show, take out another two hours of interview. So now we're down to 10 hours worth of show, plus about 40 minutes at the beginning of him talking about something completely nonsensical, like this week, it's fucking pens. Um, so, so, so you're really left with about two hours a day, six hours a week, 60 people. I mean, I can't imagine that the output could be that fucking strong. I mean, it just, it's, it's insane to me. That's all I'm saying. The, the output from, from those people, from, I'm going to say most <laughs> that work there is pretty strong. And there's a lot of stuff. He just has stuff that he's the, the, uh, the stuff that he has prepared is insane. The amount of stuff like for Bubba's show, for instance, I would, I would prepare Bubba eight hours of material every day for a four hour show and make him decide what the best stuff was and which that's when we were really good. Howard for, let's say a three hour show, let's say for a three hour show, Howard each day probably has 15 hours worth of material that he can get to. And uh, he choo- picks and chooses what he wants to get to. And there's some stuff uh, that's really good. Like I left in March 
you had the me for, for for instance, you had the me versus Benji going out and getting um, women's phone numbers on Hollywood Boulevard. Right. That was done in October in LA. By March, when I left, it still hadn't been played. So tell me then why something like that wouldn't be played, but something as horrific as Priest and Boy would get, you know, top billing any given day. I mean, I, I think the thing that I'm not realizing or that maybe you're maybe not realizing is that the reason we even exist is because there are so many disenfranchised fans that think the show couldn't possibly be worse if it tried. And it's almost to the point where it's too built up. It's too manufactured. There's not enough spontaneity anymore. The fans... Real, realism. You're, they're missing the realism is what you're mean. Well, the fans. The, the yeah. fan aspect of the show is completely gone. You know, you have... They've taken away all comments on Twitter. So there's nothing left there to actually comment on. Um, so they've they've closed down all Twitter commenting or anything like that. So you basically you don't really take a lot of phone calls, um, and a lot of the phone calls that are taken are people that have been on the show for forever. Um, so there's no true fan interaction anymore, and I feel like that's one of the main reasons that so many people don't listen anymore because we don't have that interaction with him like he was that every man that we fell in love with. Okay, I completely Agreed? understand that I completely understand your point and and I thought about what you're saying now because I I thought about what you're saying now. I thought a long time I said these fans are fans that are disappointed, disenfranchised as you would say. And I started started thinking long and hard of the things that I'm a huge fan of. And um, I started thinking about Metallica and they put out some albums, uh, Load and Reload and, and these albums. And I was really as upset and disappointed as you guys are about Howard. So I took a step back and really started thinking, like, remember how disappointed you were about Metallica putting out albums that you hated? Look at Remember how disappointed you were about uh, some of your favorite TV shows when they, for lack of a better, of a better term, jumped the shark? Let these people have their space to be disappointed because... Um, it is true. The show that you got before that you fell in love with is not the show today. And so I can understand where you're coming from. Right. So how does that make it? Because your own words, it is the best. The show is the best it's ever been. You said that. You said the show is the best that it has As ever been. As we sit here been. today? Um, I think on your show, you answered a question of somebody who came on uh, asking a question. And you said the show is it's better than it's ever been. Uh, I don't remember saying that. So if I said that, I might have been drunk. <laughs> uh, so my favorite era of the Stern Show is yeah. 2006 to 2008 is my favorite era of the Stern Show. So I my think. favorite time of the Stern Show is is Artie and first coming on to Sirius. That's 2006 to 2008. Yeah. That's when that, that was. That is the and, best time of, of, of and them. We, and we had Bob, we had Bubba in the afternoon, uh, right. and our show was out of control, and Scotty Farrell, and the specialty shows, and it really was like in, in 06 and 07, 08, when you turned on Howard 100 and Howard 101, you got great programming from 6 a.m. till probably 11, 12. Scotty Farrell, I think, ended at 12 at night. It was it was outstanding. So I know that Bubba kind of really fucked that whole thing up, and um, and I get how that not, not all Bubba's fault, by the way. Not all Bubba's fault, but do you think? Do you think all of those shows going away was because um, Howard was trying to pull in, rein in more marbles for himself? I Be mean, honest. I mean, I think that's possible. I think that's very possible. I think that um, uh, also uh, that I think that that's that's one possibility. Uh, I think I think there's some multiple factors. Maybe that's a factor. That could be. Uh, I also think that the higher ups at Sirius, <clears throat> people that are from. The Northeast and the New York area. There's Did no. Did you just spell John? Did you spell to my ear? I did. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's um. That is uh. Some of the people uh, that run Sirius. In fact, all of them are from uh, the Northeast, and none of them are from or understand people from the Southeast. So they didn't really understand Bubba. They didn't really understand me. Um. So they felt like that they could give us a. And, and this was in 2011. They felt like they could give us a bad deal. Uh, and uh, Baba just decided no because we have a terrestrial radio company, Cox Media Group, uh, out of uh, Atlanta. They have many stations, and uh, they offered us a deal that paid us a lot more than SiriusXM was uh, offering to pay us. That SiriusXM offered to cut our pay by eighty percent, 
And Jesus. we said, uh, no, thanks. Uh, but, at the, but couldn't at you the work a deal where you could do both? I mean, it's 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 uh, recorded. Like, why wasn't there an ability to do both? There was. They just wanted to pay us 80% less. No, so, no, no. What I'm saying is, even if they paid you 80% less, you still had the airtime on a stern channel, and you could probably still take the other the other deal, no? Uh, possibly. Um, but also you had to do Friday. You had to do two, sh you had to do eight hours on Friday. And just to be quite honest with you, I think Baba was, I think Baba was insulted that they did that to him. And that's what you have to understand about people that are not from the, the New York area. I think that we are very um, Scots Irish type score settling people. And if we get insulted, it's, it's not good. So, you know, Bubba had COVID and he stopped his show unceremoniously today. Because he felt that's, that what I heard. that's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. kind of a that's weird thing went on there. Um, so when you got to okay, so I heard that you had said that it was because of Beth that you wound up getting onto yeah. the Stern show. Is that true? Ish. Um, I ish. had ish. Yes. So I was in. So I was in my background check phase for NFL Network, not the radio version NFL Network, the TV version, the the, the Headquarters out in Venice, California. So I was going to produce their morning show, uh, and I had they had me in the background check phase. Also, the senior vice president of Howard's Channels flew out to L.A. and interviewed me, and I was waiting to hear back from them. And I went to a party at Sam Simon's house because uh, I'm an animal person, just like uh, Sam and Beth and everybody. And uh, I went to say it was actually Sam's birthday party, and all the PETA people were there, and all the animal rights people were there, and uh, Beth happened to who be there. Who, who invited you? Sam. How did you get there? Okay, so you know Sam, him. Uh, Sam and I were very, I am still not over him passing away. Sam and I were very, very, very close friends. Um, as close as as close as close uh, Ralph? And Sam? Uh, easily, 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 yeah. Okay. I, talk, okay. I, talk, I, talk, I talk with Sam all the time. Ralph was close with, with, with him as well. And, uh, you know, he was good friends with Drew Carey as well. So um, Sam, you know, knew a lot of people, but he wasn't like personally close to a lot of people. Like I would, when I was in LA, every time I was in LA, I would stay with him. When I moved out there, I stayed with him for a month before move into my apartment in Pasadena. So I was invited there by Sam uh, to come to his birthday party, his last birthday party that he had. I got there. Uh, Beth was uh, there and saw me. <clears throat> she asked me, what, I, what was I doing? At that time, I was working for iHeart on uh, KFI in Los Angeles, and I was about to get hired by the NFL. I was like, you know. Um, Did she I know who it. you were? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Beth, and I, Beth and I, Beth is, I've known Beth since 2005. <laughs> um, okay. I helped, I helped put the channels together and put the channels on the air. Uh, back in 05. Yeah, so, uh, serious? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, because I, Bubba and I were fired, and Howard, when he decided to hire us, asked Bubba if he could uh, borrow me to come up there and uh, work with uh, some of the people at Sirius XM to get the channel ready, because all we had was two channels sitting there silently. Why are so, you? Uh, uh, because I had a, I had a ton of experience in this type of radio, and also, uh, two other times, I had started up radio stations from the beginning. So I had okay. a kind of experience in setting that kind of stuff up. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I had known Beth. I had inter Bubba and I had interviewed Beth. Uh, we had been to uh, lots of events with her, uh, and we had uh, supported North Shore quite a bit. So, yeah, Beth was, um, she's always been super, super sweet to me. So I see her at the party. She says, hey, Brent, what's going on? What are you doing? I said, like, well, I'm working at KFI. I'm about to get a job at the NFL. And I was like, you know, I, I, I interviewed for a job with the Stern Channels. And she's like, does Howard know that? I said, uh, no. She's like, did you tell him? I was like, no, I'm not going to bother him. So she said, well, I'm going to tell him. I was like, well, that's, you know, that's your uh, that's your husband. And I'm not going to tell you what you can and can't say to him. And uh, so that was a Friday night. That Monday morning, uh, I had a job offer. Really? So you think that it was because you had her ear and she went to... Howard and so you you got there right when the serious channels were what where, 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 when did you it get there August of 2014 so um I'd been there you know previously with Bob's show up until the end of 2010 I was gone for 2011 2012 2013 and then August of 2014 is when I came back okay so why didn't you last on that show I, everybody else is there 15 20 30 years what happened with you tell me about uh, LA so L.A., let's, uh, let's back up, because L.A. does play a part in this. Um, uh, people that say that I was doing cocaine in L.A. are absolutely insane and incorrect on many, many levels. 
Uh, I do uh, smoke a lot of weed and I do uh, psilocybin, which is magic mushrooms. Um, but I didn't even do mushrooms in LA. I just had weed. I, I was so excited to go to the marijuana store. Um, it, so we went to LA and everything that happened uh, in LA. And then I, then we come back and it was the show where we did the recap of LA. They okay. really, they really, really bummed me out and put me in a pretty sour mood uh, towards the show. Why? So, uh, I felt like it was unfair. And I felt, felt like it was completely unfair because there were things that were held back. In fact, <clears throat> Um, you know, I was with two women in L.A. They, they, they got the one to come on and lie. The other one gave an interview to Shuli, <laughs> and she talked about what a great time she had, but they played none of those clips. Uh, so, so what was, was it? I was, I was upset about that. And I was upset about people that I thought were my friends kind of turning on me. Well, I kind of feel like on air... Um you know, Ronnie was saying, you know, Brent was really kind of freaking out, going back and forth into the bathroom, really freaking True. out. And and um, and I don't know what's going on with him, man. And then Robin, I guess, looked at something on your phone or somebody else's phone and said, oh, that's disgusting. I, I, I think lesser of you now. So what was that about? She said you have no honor. So this one, the, the, the woman that called in. Uh, says to me in person, like, okay, well, you can talk about this on the air, but she wanted to, uh, and, and my wife's in the other room and knows this, this woman wanted to, like, date me for the rest of the week that I was there. Yeah. And I was wrong for doing this, but I kind of strung her along. And, but I never saw her again after that one night, Saturday night in L.A. So I kind of strung her along like I would see her again, but didn't. So that's why she was pissed, um, and that's what Robin saw and why Robin was like, you have no honor. I'm feeling a little word vomit right now because I'm not understanding I'm not understanding how, how the L.A. trip and how them setting, you know, listen, I, I get that it's all kind of like a, a wrestling work of sorts, you know, set this up, mm -hmm. you know, get it together, make sure that Caitlin has somebody on her side, make sure that you get together with girls on your side. And I know that one of the girls actually, gosh, I'm trying to remember if we even had her on. Oh no, that was with Lenny Dykstra. But I know that one of the girls said that, you know, she, she legit thought that she was just going on a date with you and she didn't know that this was necessarily a, a work, if you will, to set you up with having sex with her. Uh, completely false. So um, I'll just, I'll tell you how it, how it all worked. The, um, the girl that I'm on a date with on Saturday night, was a friend of my friend, Johnny Frotto Jr. And we talked to her on the phone. She knew exactly what the deal was. Okay. That's what. That's why Robin saw, saw those texts. She knew what the deal was. But what I'm telling you is, after that night, she wanted to go out with me a few more times that week. And I kind of was like, yeah, we'll go out tomorrow. Yeah, we'll do, we'll, I'll see you again. And I never did. That's why she called in and she was pissed. The other girl uh, just messaged me on Instagram and was like, hey, uh, if you want a 25-year-old while you're here, just hit me up and send me your number. So, okay. So so then so then, what is the L.A. story? Like I'm feeling from what you're saying that there was no real L.A. story other than you weren't really happy with the way it went down. So uh, I, yeah, I don't was, understand what that means. Like, So the way it was presented on the air. The way it was presented on the air um, was not – entirely accurate the way it was presented on the air was oh i'm lying about these two women and um therefore uh i'm lying caitlin's not lying and i'm a weirdo and a creep and i don't get girls and caitlin gets guys it's just it's just not that's just not the way that any of this goes and that's not the way it went in la and they knew it so for me it was I, all done in order just to make me um look bad and I get that that's the bit, but it actually wasn't accurate. And um, I was very, um, I'm a very loyal person. So therefore, I felt like it was a one-way street going on at that point. So was then the jackhammer bit a bit? Oh, no, it wasn't a bit. Like, she actually hooked up with the jackhammer. It wasn't a bit. Oh, that I understand that she hooked up with him, but was it set up so that she would hook up with that particular guy because he wanted some sort of publicity no, similar no, to the porn stars who used to come in you know right. to promote themselves so how did how did that work out no, no caitlin set that up herself um on our uh swinger site that we're on and then, at, then she found out like from him from conversing with him like what he did 
And then uh, once she told me, I was like, well, we got to get him on the air. I mean, that sounds interesting. And then when Chris Wilding came over, uh, he interviewed her about it, and she uh, she told the whole deal to Chris Wilding in his in that interview he did with her. Yes, we 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 <laughs> all we all heard that. I, I'm curious about how how setting yourself. Okay, so when you went to the Stern Show, you weren't on air for a, a, a while. You were there, but you weren't really like an on air person for the show what was the turning point to make you become an on-air guy versus the guy that was just behind the scenes um there was a meeting we were in uh, if you remember <laughs> fred the elephant boy called the cops on high pitch eric yes uh, <laughs> so uh, they came up with a bit that we're going to make wendy the judge so i was in the meeting for that and uh in that meeting i started coming up with like well in court they do this and this is how you do it and this is <laughs> this is what the judge is allowed to do and uh, Howard was like, well, then you need to come in tomorrow on the air and sit here and help me. <laughs> so that's kind of how it came about. So do you think that Howard to some, uh, I, I feel like Howard mainly hires people that he can, he can, and I'm not going to say look down upon, but that he feels that he is better than. Like, I think as a general rule, most of the on-air people are either unattractive, overweight, have flaws, have a stutter, have something that makes them almost like his internal whack pack that makes him feel better about himself. Do you feel like one of your entrees into actually being on air with him was um, the fact that you wanted to talk about swinging and that would be a part of your persona on air? But that didn't come up until t- the end of, kind of towards the end of 2018. And I was on the air long before that. Uh, I know, but so. you became a much bigger part of the on air thingamajig once he realized that he could talk to you about things that, of a sexual nature, that especially once it included your wife as well. Like, I feel like that made you a little bit more of a prize for him to, to talk about this kind of shit. Well, I mean, well, sure. I mean, that um, that subject matter itself is better than a lot of the subject matter that they're talking about. It's more interesting from the human psychology side. Everybody can kind of relate to it. Um, you know, Caitlin's a, a beautiful lady, and uh, it's I get it. I totally get why he would gravitate um, towards that. So uh, I thought it was you know some some really good radio, especially with Shuli and I in there um, doing that stuff. So, but do you think that that made you a little bit more of a valuable player to him because you would talk about that? Just same way, like, you know, Chris Absolutely. Wilding coming in and talking about some disgusting blowjob he gave to somebody or touching Ralph under the table or something like that was of interest to him. And do you, do you realize that his purient interest always goes to something sexual and we all feel almost towards the gay side at, at this point? I, I I think he I think his interests yeah do go to those things and I think it's for some of the same reasons that mine do. I'm really interested in abnormal psychology. And anytime that we can talk about any abnormal psychology, I'm totally hooked. And I think that he's that way too. But why? And, why why would you go away from women who mm-hmm. who fit who who having women in who completely fit the demographic of the male twenty five to forty five um, in Middle America? Why why then would something like October be of interest to anyone in the entirety of the fucking planet? Tell me. That's a great. <laughs> that's a great point. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna argue that point with you. Uh, and especially as somebody that loves uh, women and somebody that and, and loves the, I've all. That's one of the reasons I love the Stern Show. And one of the things that we did very well with Bubba's show is uh, highlight um, women for the audience. You're right; it's men, twenty five, fifty four, <laughs> Middle America, wrestling fans, heavy metal fans, things like that. Tell and me all- why anybody would want to see how big is your cock contest? Who's driving a truck across Middle America? Tell me how that is something that appeals and why, as you just said, you know, the interest in, in deviant sexual behavior, that's not deviant sexual behavior. That's normal behavior for a lot of our country. But no. why is it behavior that Howard would be interested in? That's a good question. That I can't answer for you. I can't speak for him or why he would be interested in, in But those has things. that make you guys feel in the back? Like you always think that Richard coming on air and saying, oh, I have a great idea. I'm going to put my, you know, cock cheese on Sal's fucking face or I'm going to shove my, or, or Benji's going to jerk off both of them. That kind of thing. I don't know even why. How is that 
even fucking funny. It's stupid. It's like ridiculous. Like it's like how does how does Jake going across the fucking country in his truck even remotely think that that appeals to him? How? Oh, how? Well, well, with the Sal and Richard stuff, I'll tell you, anything they do, I find fucking hilarious. I, there is no bigger Sal and Richard fan than me. So with them, I do, you know, at first, when I first met them, and they would say all of this gay stuff was, just because it's funny, I kind of I thought, thought the same way you did. I was like, oh, that's weird. But once I got to know them and really got into their comedy, <laughs> it is. With them, with those two, it's just funny. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so with a Richard and Sal, and again with a twelve-hour show, how many fucking phony phone calls can they possibly do? What else do those two guys do? Well, they come. Up, they, they do. They they uh, come up with a lot. They do a lot. They do song parodies. Obviously, they do bits, and they also come up with a lot of ideas for the show. Whether they get used or not, those two are an idea machine. And I'll tell you now, if I was starting, if I, if, 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 if the radio gods came to me and said, we'll give you an unlimited budget, you can have as many people as you want, I'm hiring Sal and Richard or the first two people I'm hiring. Yeah, but you're not hiring 60 fucking useless people in the background <laughs> who basically, you know, are trying to figure out something to justify their salaries whilst they sit there thinking of, like, weird ideas to present to the boss. I mean, it's not like Saturday Night Live where you have, you know, 50 guys in a room all throwing shit out for that week's fucking show, and it's a one-hour show one time a week. Like, that's a lot of fucking people. For a yeah. show whose output is lackluster at best for anybody who is listening to it. And I love, I love your girl giggle about how funny Sal and fucking Richard are. <laughs> but the reality is the show <laughs> as a whole is You're, not fucking funny. I, I, it's listen, just not. Okay, I understand. Do you think I, it is? Do you think I, it is? I don't listen currently. Uh, okay, you just left last year, so we're not talking anything substantially different. Actually, it could be quite possibly worse, because I believe that with COVID, number one, I believe that he has already been vaccinated, but I also believe he will never see the inside of the fucking serious studios again. Like, I believe that the show will be 1,000% the way it is right now. I don't think that he comes, how about this? I don't think he comes back to Manhattan again. I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> I think he sells his place, and I think he just toggles between... Uh, uh, the Hamptons in Florida, and that's the he, end of him. And he's pretty scared of Florida too, to be honest with you. But um, he shouldn't he, be. I mean, I honestly, know, I, know. I have man, lived my best fucking life for the last couple of months down here. I I feel like COVID doesn't even exist. It's the are weirdest you, are, thing. Are, are you permanently here? I am not permanently here. <laughs> I, I I live in Manhattan, and this is um this is very weird for anybody who comes to visit me. They don't understand how Florida is not as freaked out and paranoid as the Northeast is. Like, nobody yeah, does. I, here, I in, here, in Saint Pete, here in St. Pete, we are not freaked out. <laughs> We're not freaked out at all. And, did uh, you get vaccinated? Very, uh, no, I did not. Are you planning on it? Mm, I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm going to see a little bit more data before I get vaccinated. So, so tell me about what you're doing with Shuli now, because I was interested in this, I must confess. I feel like... Um, I, I feel like you getting together with him might actually be a good thing for you. So we're, so we're bringing um, Miserable Men back, and um, I'm going to be the producing the show, and on the show, we've already taped quite a few episodes. They're hilarious. <clears throat> we got uh, back together with uh, Bob Levy and uh, Mike Morris and Mark Burns and Shuli, and it is a really funny show. It is really back to a lot of things that... <laughs> It's a good thing that we can't be canceled uh, because there's a lot of things on there that are completely politically incorrect. Uh, Bob Levy is on fire. He's the funniest that I've heard him in a long time. And there's a lot of people that are uninhibited and we're just letting it rip on there. And it's it, it's really good. It's Where's really it going to be? Where, it's going to be on uh, podcasts on iTunes and things like that. It's uh, through Herdat Media and we're going to put them out uh, where you get all, all of your podcasts. And it's coming soon. In fact, I talked to the people that are editing the show today, and I think we're about seven to ten days away from it hitting uh, iTunes on Apple. Is Shuli running this shit show, or is it is it his brain child? Uh, it's well, it's well, it's all of us. I'm the executive producer. Shuli <clears throat> kind of host, but Mark and Mike kind of really um, run the show and let Shuli and Bob and myself kind of quip at each other. Okay, so now will this be something where you will be? Um, financially recompensed? Like, is uh, yeah. this... 
Or is yeah. this like a brand new startup? Are you going to have commercials? Is it going to be like a, how often? It's a brand new uh, startup and they'll, they'll, they'll be sponsors, but just, just like any podcast, I'm sure I, I haven't, you know what? I talked to the guy today and I haven't figured out if we're going to put the commercials at the beginning or the end or whatever, but yes, there will, there will be sponsors, but for you, for everybody to listen to it, it's just like you can go on Apple uh, iTunes and download it. But yes, it is a paying gig. We do have a media company behind it and it's, a, it's good. Okay, so now is that going to be your mainstay of what you do? Because if no, if you're off Twitch, uh, does that mean you're going to start uh, come over to YouTube or start doing something here? Or yes, how's it going to work? Yeah, so if Twitch doesn't um, lift my suspension by the end of the week, I'm going to start uh, doing stuff on YouTube. But I do a show every night on Patreon from six to eight, um, which is actually a better show than I was doing on Twitch because on Patreon you can um, speak like adults. And you can really tell your stories. It's like Sirius XM. You can say whatever you want. So uh, every night from 6 to 8, I do a show on Patreon. But I'm going to flip over and start doing stuff on YouTube if I don't hear back from uh, my uh, people at Twitch by this Friday. Okay. I do want to talk about Caitlin. And I want to talk about her OnlyFans thing. But I, I do want to um, just circle back really, really quickly to – and I know you don't want to talk about her, but I don't care. Um, I want to talk about what you feel is the main change or difference that a a person like a Marcy Turk made to the Stern Show. Uh, Shuli happened to mention it on Bubba's show the other day. Um, I know you don't want to talk about her because she's, quote, not a public person, but I think the reality is that many, many people feel like her coming in, especially with her cult-like getting things done um, scenario, made the show a very different animal from what it was, even what you say were the best years. Uh, fair point, and I understand why you would think that. Um, I'll just tell you this. She's there as the organization person. Um, she does the, the, the hand, the, like I said, there's 85 people there to handle and somebody's got to handle the employees. And that's but why what would she somebody, does. why would somebody in their thirties who's had 12 different jobs within 16 years be the correct person to handle 80 people on her own? Just that's curious, not, just throwing it out here. <laughs> that's not a question for me. Uh, and you're not going to get me to, um. But since she's not a media person, do, is that the right human being to manage that many people and be responsible for human beings who have been there for 30 years and now are holy like holy shit who the fuck is this coming in telling me what to do so i so my my boss there was a guy named jeremy coleman uh, yeah he's the he's the senior vice president of the channels i worked specifically for sirius xm um so it, you know that she actually her salary is um is paid by howard actually not mm -hmm. by sirius Okay, Correct. just throwing it out Correct. there. Yeah, I do know that. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what, who or why um, uh, she's there or that person is there or even that position is there uh, or if it's the correct person. Like for me personally, I would put, I would, you know, if it were my organization, uh, I would put somebody there that had been in HR probably for 20 years. Of like, course. You know, like and my when friend, you yeah, I'm sorry. When you wind up having sex with two staff members and actually get pregnant and marry one of them, I feel like that's kind of not the right person. Just throwing it uh, out there. I don't know. Right, that, I, don't, I don't. I don't know that that's true. I know that one. I know. I know her and her husband very well. Obviously, um, who works? Who 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 worked for Stern Show? Yes, he does. Okay, he, so there you go. And so, before that, we know about Ben. But okay, good. No, no, Ben is her husband. No, I'm um, sorry. I didn't mean Ben. I meant, uh, oh, guys, I know you guys will will help me in the in the in the chat. But there was a guy before him, and apparently, when they went for raises, Jason was really fucking upset that this other person got a raise and he didn't, and he's the one who spilled the beans that Marcy was fucking him. But I digress. Go back. That must have been. That must have been Brendano. Thank you. It was Brind No, it wasn't Brendano. I, I know Brindano. Steve's one of my best friends, and I really don't think that that's true. That's what I just said. It wasn't <laughs> Brindano. Brand, Brandano is a, is a really good guy, man. No, it he wasn't really him. Is. But I'm um, sorry. Let's go back to that. So, yeah. But but, but when you're talking about, about qualifications, so my friend that runs HR at Sirius XM, her name's Dara. Like, that's who I would think that you would put in that position. Um, and Dara's been in HR for decades and is really even keeled and handles the employees at Sirius XM very well. Um I don't know. Some some decisions that organizations make are are beyond me. 
Well, I only know it's 12 jobs because I looked at her LinkedIn before she made it private. And I actually so, sort of infamously um, circled all the typos on her resume and then posted oh it online. I know it was a really fucked up thing to do. <laughs> and I, I don't regret it because I think that if you're going to put yourself out there and you're going to be the manager of so many people, you should really actually um, know how to spell. So that's really that's really a fucking thorn in my side. And so I kind of feel that when you bring somebody in in their mid-30s who's had 12 jobs and you're having them um, dictate what the 80 people do, I feel like what was happening with Howard was the familiarity breeds contempt and people were coming in in sweatsuits every day and just fucking dragging their asses and needed a little fire up their asses. And, you know, maybe she was the right person to do with it. I, who, I mean, who knows? Uh, here's here's the thing with me, and I'll, I'll tell you in, in a broader sense what is so frustrating about radio. Uh, so even step outside the Stern Show, the people that run Sirius XM, all, let me think, the, the main people, none of them have radio experience. Well, a lot of them left, didn't they? Like, didn't some the head guys um, go over to just be on the uh, board of directors now? And there's oh, that woman in charge. You're talking about Joe Clayton, uh, and he moved over, uh, and then Mel Carmazin came in, and he left. Uh, now the CEO— I actually happen to know Mel very well. He's, um, <laughs> I'm very friendly with him. So, um, yeah. so my, my favorite CEO ever is a guy named Randy Michaels who competed with Mel back in the day. And so Mel came from sales. Randy came from programming. So that's who I learned from. But here's the here's the thing. At Sirius XM, if you talk about Mr. Greenstein— uh, in the in the in the senior leadership there, and uh, the new woman that came over to run all of talk radio came from Yahoo and the New York Times. So there's nobody, literally nobody, with radio experience. And when I used to talk to Phil Hendry on the air, what he used to say to me uh, was, uh, "Why don't you and Bubba walk onto the Miramax lot and tell them that you've got an idea for a movie and see how fast they'll, they'll talk to you." Well, the reality is most CEOs of companies, I mean, let's be honest, you know, I, I was in the garment center my entire life and it was it was nothing to think of if a CEO came in from um, diapers or from, you know, Johnson & Johnson or something, you know, having nothing to do with anything that we did. But the thought is always that they know how to run things and they know how to streamline things so that these um, stockholders make more money. That's what it's really all about. Of course. But, but when you're talking about broadcast art, <laughs> streamlining things sometimes isn't always the best for the audience. And uh, you have a lot of outliers when you're dealing with radio, a lot of people with uh, fucked up heads. I'm one of them. Uh, and you have to give that creative space. And we had that for a long time uh, on Sirius XM, and then we didn't. So yeah. uh, it's it's when you don't have that creative space, it gets very, very, very frustrating. You know, when I got fired from Clear Channel in 2004 because of the whole uh, FCC coming down on us, it was insane. Um, because we have all this creative space, then all of a sudden the FCC decides to crack down, and then they're like, nope. You have to be, uh, uh, as uh, a child, should be able to turn on your show and listen to it. And it just, it, it killed us. So, Don't you think, though, like even in old Stern days when, you know, crucified by the FCC and all that stuff, don't you think there's like a certain part of, of a, a DJ or a shock jock or whatever that knows that you're going to get in fucking trouble by the FCC? Therefore, it's almost better for business. In, in a lot of instances, you know, when people are coming after you and they're angry at you, they want to hear what you're saying. So therefore, being the bad boy made him more popular. And I don't know why that didn't happen in Bubba's case, but but in Howard's, you know, listen, he fucking fell upwards. He 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 got so many great breaks that made him the person that he is today. And I feel like, you know, Bubba basically fidgeting like fucking Dr. Seuss in his backyard with fucking ratings, you know, didn't exactly do it the right way. But he he should have had just as much notoriety and and fame as as Howard did. And, and you're, this is going to sound crazy to you, but I think that a lot of it is regional bias. Um, those of us that are in the South don't get as many opportunities in the entertainment business as those that come from California or the Northeast. And I had a lot to do with regional bias because our numbers in Tampa and Orlando and West Palm and Fort Myers and Jacksonville were off the charts. And um, we just did not uh, get the Yeah, but you got to admit the, the fuck up of the, the ratings thing. I think that was the death knell for Bubba. Yeah, I well, I, I, I wasn't there for that. Um, I'd already left by that point. Um, uh, that but, actually I, reminds I'm, I'm me. About, 
Yeah, I'm sorry. I wanted to ask you, what happened with Manson? Because, you know, he was on like two weeks ago with us. And he said that you basically ghosted him when you got down to Florida. That you guys were going to do something together. And he, you know, you guys talked about it. And he talked to you about Twitch and, and doing your channel there. And then you basically ghosted him. It was, it was my only Bubba question. I had to get it out there. Sorry. <laughs> uh, well, Manson's a liar. <laughs> okay. Uh, so here's the deal. Uh, I, I had a meeting with my wife and met with Manson and his wife, and we talked about a possibility of doing something together. And then once my he wife, and, yeah. and once my wife and I sat down and talked about it, because Manson's wife and my wife are 180 opposite. My okay. wife, my wife is very open. She's very, um, she's the sweetest person in the world. She will talk to anybody and she's very open and very honest about everything. Manson's wife doesn't even allow him to go to Hooters. So, what kind of show do you think that we're going to have when his wife uh, gets very angry about anything to do with other women? And particularly, she probably wouldn't like the way that my wife expresses her sexuality. So I just don't think that that would have worked. Well, you know what? That's like saying, you know... What? My, 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 wife, my wife just said that we should have communicated with them more. Well, but, but yeah, but I don't know what wives have to do with you two getting together and doing something. Uh, above and beyond wives. Like, well, who cares? Like, I can't tell you how many fucking people's husbands I don't get along with. But that doesn't mean anything <laughs> for, for uh, my relationship with that person. Uh, and especially since you're going back down to Florida and it would be kind of fun and nice to have somebody who you like and get along with to do a show with. I, I don't know. That's just my thought. Well, his wife... And my wife are on the air. So that's but they of, don't have to be. I mean, you could do anything you wanted. It was like a kid going to fucking um, uh, to a new summer camp. You could be anybody you wanted. You were had a fresh fucking start. So it didn't have to be about you and Caitlin. It could, like you're doing with Shuli now. I mean, it's like you could do so many other things. It's not, I don't think they're mutually exclusive is what I'm trying to say. Uh, you may be right. So you know what? I'm going to pull up and I will read to you. Our email exchange. How does that okay. sound? <laughs> and let's see. Uh, uh, tch -tch -tch, here we go. And let me go back. Uh, tch -tch -tch. He said to me, um, hey, uh, <clears throat> hey, wow, so you're up and running on Twitch now. Um, uh, are we going to do something together? So I say to him, uh, I'm going to do my daily show every day at 3 p.m., but if you wanted to do a show with me once a week, that would be great. So he says, radio sucks now, and I hope all the talent gets screwed. That's it. That that's all you got. It. That's the last thing I said to him. When we came down here, I uh, had to move. I got my show up and running. I would have done a show with him once a week. But we never uh, got around to doing it. Doesn't mean that we can't. But I needed to do something daily, and he does a daily show in the morning. I'm not getting in the morning, up. In the morning, I know. I'm not getting up in the morning. I'm not getting up in the morning ever again. I'm I'm done with that schedule. Um, I did it for long enough. So if he wanted to do something once a week, I would have been glad to do it. And I told him that via email. Okay, I think you should. I think you should just throw out to him a hey, just because I feel like I feel like he likes you and that he wanted to have you and he be part of something together. So I don't know. I, that's that's the thought I got from, from talking to him. All right, my, la <laughs> my last Howard question. Um, as a producer, were you aware of how many people actually listen to the show? No idea. Okay, how and, come? It, it, that, that is a serious XM thing that I completely disagree with. So you have no idea any channel who or how many people are listening. Um, at Sirius XM, even my friend Pete Dominic there, he, they called him up into the office one time at Sirius XM and they said, uh, we're not seeing enough, uh, reaction in audience, uh, enough of an audience for your show in, in our data. So he says, okay, well, let me see the data and let's talk about it. So they're like, nope, we're not going to show you the data. So Pete Dominic just walks out and goes, okay, well, we're, I'm not having this conversation with you then if I can't see the data. Uh, and it's a weird thing to do because in terrestrial radio, when you're having ratings problems, <laughs> if you do. Uh, they bring you into the office and they plop down Arbitron in front of you and go, look right here. Your time's been listening sucks. What's going on? You need to hold the audience longer. Like you can't have a real conversation with people if you have no idea how many people are listening or for how long. So take a guess. How many people do you think listen to a show on a daily basis? Seriously. Uh, 
Okay, on on a daily. Throw it out there. You've been basis. in this business what twenty eight years now. Yeah. Throw it fucking out there. Tell me what I'd you say. Think. I'd say three million on a daily basis. Three million on a daily basis. Yeah. Those are the those are the pure listeners, right? Yeah. And do you think now that he's like maybe skewing it a little bit more towards women, especially after the book came out, where he yeah. was trying to skew it towards different people? Yes. And those are the only phone calls he basically takes now. <laughs> it's like is a that, weird thing to me. Yeah. Is it? He's only taking women's calls now? Pretty, pretty much, unless it's somebody who's been on the show for forever. And then finally, do you think that he wears a wig? Do you think it's a hair system? Be honest, Brett. Do not fucking lie to me. <laughs> I'm not tell lie me what to you, you tell, tell me. You have absolutely... seen the back of his fucking head. Tell me what you think. I've been as close to him as I am to this computer screen right now. Lots and lots and lots and lots of times. It's definitely not a wig. I've seen him with his system. hair wet. System? I have, that I have no idea, but it's definitely um, not a wig. It's system. definitely not a wig. A he has not like had Bobo. his hair like cut Bobo. in eight months. And <laughs> then still exactly the fucking same. This is my uh, question. Well, I'm bald, so I don't know much about hair. <laughs> uh, I lost my hair in 2000. So. All right. I want to talk about Caitlin. I wish she was here with us because I really have um, questions about her OnlyFans channel. And I have questions about um, how you guys, all, how she can do something like that. First off, I mean, I can't even imagine doing, <laughs> you know, tits and ass, let alone fucking... Oh feed or anything, but I'm curious as to how that came about because I know that she worked like a real person yeah. um, when yeah. you guys were in New York and did the whole like, you know, talking about um, um, uh, swinging and stuff like that. Did that hurt her ability to work as a no. real working kind of put on something every day and go to work? No, it didn't. Actually, the bosses at the company that she worked at in New York City um, knew and listened to her on the air. But she was just so good that they they were like they didn't care. No, it didn't. Here's what um, happened. Once we, gosh, the stories that we had at the Stern Show are such kindergarten child's play now. To the stories that we have, because we didn't have much experience. Then we have a I, lot of I, I've been hearing a lot about it, and people. I have to tell you, you know, some people love to talk about what you guys talk about, but some people are absolutely mortified about the fucking conversations <laughs> that, that you guys have. Seriously, like just cannot believe that you would actually go there with your <laughs> lives. Uh, don't you think that ultimately that's going to affect you though? Like I, f I almost feel bad for Caitlin because I feel like, like how long can you do an OnlyFans thing? And then what happens after that? It's kind of like a porn star going to like mommy and me classes afterwards like how do you how do you reconcile doing this now today yes make some money and whatever you got to fucking do to to make it work but then what well she wants to make a longer career out of it and actually in the adult industry if you want to call it that um once women get over uh 40 they become even more desired uh, for for this type of stuff, Christy Canyon, who she was just on her show on Sirius XM, is in her fifties and looks great. I mean, this is what I really love. I don't know. Caitlin, Caitlin really enjoys it. And how it came about was this: <clears throat> we started going to this uh, swingers resort down here in Florida called Caliente. It's not far from you, Monique. Do you uh, even do you even know that you did a birthday thing for me? Uh, yes, I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Glad. Uh, but but there's a swingers resort down here, and we started going there. And you hang out. It's one of the nicest resorts I've ever been to. So you go down there. You go to this swingers resort, Caliente, and you hang out there uh, naked all day. And she's like, "Well, listen, like people are seeing me naked here. Somebody you're not supposed to, but somebody can snap a picture and put it online. I enjoy being naked. I enjoy taking photos of my body. People still want, people want to see my body right now. There may be a time that comes when I'm 70 and they don't. So I might as well do something like this. She really enjoys doing OnlyFans." She really enjoys swinging. She really enjoys expressing her sexuality. It's it's fantastic. I mean, I absolutely love it. We have never been closer. Um, that woman saved my life. She um, pulled me out of a, a deep, dark hole where I was. I was on the way to death uh, when she pulled me out of a deep, dark hole. I love her more than anything. And uh, we are closer than ever. We are like the, the when even when we meet the other swingers couples in Miami and other places, they're like, if you guys are relationship goals, because we are so close. And uh, she loves it. And I support her. Uh, and I love it. I think I think it's fantastic. Like, I love all this stuff. And I'm not even lying when I say I don't understand it. But I but tell me what it's like. And this is not even being 
hyperbolic or anything. Tell me what it's like to be a fucking a, a, a cuck. Like, what does that mean? What? How? How does that? How does that translate into a um, fruitful relate? I mean, obviously, you both have to be into it. But explain to me what it exactly means to be a cuck. Well, that's not, uh, so I will explain that, but that's not what I am. Here's here's what I am. I'm what's called a stag, and she's what's called a vixen in the in the lifestyle. Because cucks do not participate with the other women. They only watch. That's not my that's not my gig. Like, for instance, this weekend we had uh, a woman here from Miami that stayed with us all weekend. And um, Caitlin <laughs> did a lot of the watching and filming. But don't so, you, but, but on OnlyFans, aren't you filming and watching while she's doing other things sure absolutely absolutely but 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 see all those things on only fans except for one all those things on only fans are during sex parties that we're at so yes i will watch and take films of her but at those same sex parties i'm having sex with some of the other women so i know and you know if you don't want to talk about it i don't care but um i know your ex-wife was also into swinging yeah i can't or not i can't speak about her at all <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think some of it was on air back in the it, day. It, it, yes. it, was, it was, but due to legal agreements. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I understand. I can't. But I can't. I can't speak about her. I, I, I wish her well. That's, that's fine. So, say. but sort of same situation, but not. But yet, this takes it. I don't know, exponentially greater to to have things now. And yes, it's one thing to go to a fucking Caliente's and have a great time with all these other people. But now that you have a solid digital imprint of all your sexual deeds, is that not a little weird to you to maybe, I don't know, be 80 years old and looking back at your fucking life and seeing, you know, your wife in her peak um, <laughs> fucking other guys, on, uh, uh, which never goes away because it never goes away now. That's so steamy. I'm, I'm so into that. Like, it's <laughs> <laughs> so into it. It's so awesome. Like, I'm going to look back, and I said this to Ronnie before off the air, like, I'm going to look back when they put me in the ground, or it's almost time to put me in the ground, and say, like, I have no regrets. I tried all the stuff I want to try. Like, I'm just telling you now, like, I have some crazy, kinky thoughts. Um, and we got into some of it this weekend with, with, with uh, this other woman that was here, and we get into it at these parties that we go to. It is awesome. It is really awesome. It puts me into a euphoric state of mind to the point where uh, I, I'm in a daze for a few days afterwards. It is awesome. It's everything. A lot of guys get into it and think, well, I'm just getting into it to get laid by as many women as I can. And that's the wrong reason to get into it. You have to get into it and enjoy something with your partner. And the beautiful thing about this, Monique, is the women are in charge of the whole deal. The women are in charge of everything, and I yes, love it. We always are. But, <laughs> but is there going to come a point where you say, okay, you know, Caitlin's tits are sagging, my ass looks like, you know, you can show fucking movies on it. It's time to stop this? Or is it, or are you going to, is it going to be this, um, this serotonin that you're no longer going to have, and then what replaces that, you know? Well, I think everybody's, uh, you know, into something. Everybody has their thing they're into, whether it's church or exercise or whatever, where they get their serotonin from. And uh, for me, um, most people gonna... don't get it from watching their <laughs> wife lick out another fucking girl. Although they might. I'm sorry, that uh, was yeah. wrong. That's the wrong <laughs> example. That's the wrong example. But well, is that just... is that? But what happens? What happens? What happens when that day uh, comes? Um, when that day comes, well, our rule between us, just so you know, is if either one of us are no longer into it, it stops. That, that's just and you promise it, so. each other that that's it. That is number rule number one is if either one of us are not into uh, swinging or if we're not into the current situation, everything stops. And then what? And then we then we have a discussion as a couple and work through it. Like we work through everything. Our communication is at the highest possible level. And uh, I absolutely love it. I absolutely love how, how we communicate. So on her OnlyFans, and I know, you know, please, by all means, um, promote exactly what her um, her handle is on there. I mean, I'm assuming it's just Caitlin Hatley. Yeah, it's Caitlin Hatley on OnlyFans. Or you can just simply go to CaitlinHatley.com, and there's a, a button there that you can click on. It's very easy. 
Okay. Um, and so now I have to ask you this question. So why why did you reach out to me? Because, you know, okay, first off, you're a little bit on the fucking litigious side, which is really, really annoying, okay? You, your, your threats of... Anybody. Your 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 threats of litigiousness are actually kind of silly and and they border on benign, considering the fact that now that you have so much stuff on video, it is virtually impossible unless they repeal like two thirty or something that you, you know that you could ever um, be you know have any kind of compensation from a lawsuit. So, you know, uh, uh, you know, some people know this or don't know it and I don't care who does or doesn't, but Brent had reached out to me. He was like, Hey, you know, you have these pictures of and you need to take them down. And I was like, cool. You know, and you know, you know, our emails together. I said, all you have to do is ask. It's, you know, it's not that big of a deal. I will do that for pretty much anybody who reaches out to me. Um, some of you may or may not know this also, but you know, JD's wife reached out to me and said, Hey, you know, your your people are, are basically putting up things about my friends and stuff like that. And I get that, you know, I put myself out there and whatever, but keep my friends out of it. I'm like, all you have to do is ask. I'm I'm 1000% all about not, you know, fucking with people's livelihoods and, and their lives. So I was just, uh, you know, color me curious that you actually reached out to me and, and wanted to do this with me because I would not have thought that you would have. I mean, you've talked shit about me, probably not as much as shit I've talked about you guys because I have a forum that is basically dedicated to this shit. But I'm, I'm actually curious why, why you reached out. Uh, because I, um, <clears throat> quite honestly, uh, I was drinking a little too much f from the getting down to Florida until probably about a month ago. Was drinking way too much, and uh, I had a cloudy head. So uh, two things: one, you're probably right. However, I have been through a whole defamation suit where Bubba and I were sued for defamation by a radio broadcaster, a guy that makes fun of people on the air and puts his wife on the air. And the reason that the judge got over the um, bar with the judge, the dismissal phase to the judge, is as you might or might not know, uh, public figures can sue people if they can prove actual malice. Right. Um, so uh, there are people that would be very easy to get over that actual malice bar with. Um, the judge felt like Bubba and I went too far with this guy. So we reached over, we got over that actual malice bar. So we went to full jury trial and the jury decided, well, this guy's a radio broadcaster and he makes fun of everybody so he can handle being made fun of. It was 42 counts of defamation that we had to go through in a five-year trial. I sat in probably over 50 depositions about this topic. So, um, and then... Uh, Swing the, around. Uh, so why did you come to me? So why I came you? to you. So I came to you because I felt like, look, um, your forum and your show has a lot of bad things to say about myself and my wife. So I wanted to come on and have a real conversation with you and answer any of your questions. And then if you go forward, you've got bad things to say, fine. But I wanted to actually answer your questions and talk to you about it and um, have a real conversation. The same thing I'm going to do with Sketchy Press. Uh, I'm going to talk to Stuttering John. Uh, and what are these podcasts? I'm going to talk to everybody and I'm going to answer all your questions as best I can. And uh, we can have a real conversation. And then from there... Uh, Maybe I'll come on your forum and post and read, and uh, I'll, I'll come back from time to time. So. People will always want to ask you questions. I am more than happy to have you on anytime you want to come on. Um, I will tell you that the overriding um, thought processes on my forum is that they love to watch, I'm going to say they call it a little bit of a train wreck that is you and Caitlin on Twitch. And I think it's going to probably have to change when you get to YouTube. Um just in terms of how much shit you put out there it's to people, I think I think you guys can sometimes be just a snurch TMI for the <laughs> general populace, and and yes, maybe there is something to the okay, you know, we're watching it for fun and to have a good time, but we're also watching it to see how far off the fucking rails they go, and I, I feel like there there has to come to. You know, that roller coaster is probably way at the fucking peak. You know, you showing Caitlin's tits on air and doing the end. Like that, that to me is the fucking cyclone right at the top of that, of that hill. And it's a scary place to be because I feel like you're teetering right there because I don't know how much further you can go with that type of, um, that type of 
show. I agree. So, so I agree with you. And here's here's what we've done over the last month is I've kind of revised and changed the show. She's going to be on camera on Fridays, and she is ex- actually excellent at producing the show. Okay. So she she's going to stick to helping me prepare, and I'm going to give you a lot of uh, um, news and opinions and do the things that I've always done on the air. And then on Fridays, she's going to come on the air, uh, and we will uh, give you that TMI stuff that, that, that makes people appalled. Like part of what I've always loved from – this is what I really love about being on Bubba's show. We – uh, shocked Tampa Bay on a daily basis, and we made people mortified on a daily basis. And that's kind of the punchline to my jokes. If you're mortified by something that I say, um, I get the biggest giggle out of it. it is you know, like when the when the mics go off, I, I I I bend over laughing that people are mortified by it. I I love that. My whole goal sometimes is this: as a hardcore atheist, my goal is this: is to make the Christian Puritanism that rules this country just make them completely upset and completely mortified. Because when I grew up, those these are the people that mess with my music. These are the people that um, try to get, they try to get heavy metal band. They try to get Howard thrown off the air. They try to get Bubba thrown off the air. And for me, the Puritanism that goes on in America pushed by the Catholic Church is a huge problem. So anything I can do to push back on that, I like it. But programming-wise, your point is... Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, if you're going to monetize something, there is a line to to be drawn. I mean, I think... And, you know, listen, I'm all for it. I think that I, I just feel... And I'm going to swing back to the why I think you were fired thing. I can't imagine that you would think that um, a Twitch channel would be um, monetarily more fruitful for you guys than actually being able to um, get a job doing what you do, what you do do. You know, I I mean, you know what I mean? Actually, when you take Twitch, Cameo, OnlyFans, uh, and uh, another project that I'm working on, when you take all that up, I'm making over, like as a couple, we're making over twice what we were making in New York with a third of the cost of living and zero bosses. So what is that worth? Okay, well, without knowing the numbers, I, I don't know what a lot of money is to you, but uh, I'll get, I'll give you that. Yes, the cost of living down here in Florida is substantially less than it is in New York. Do you think that you, do you think that when you, did you make more money when you went to the Stern Show than you did like at Bubba? Do you think that they pay fairly at the Stern Show? Be honest. Let me ask you, uh, let me answer just for me, because I don't know what other people make. Do I think I was paid fairly? Absolutely not. Okay. So do you think in a general sense, people in radio are, especially when you're in like the second or third or fourth, well, not talking a Robin Fred Artie type of position, but behind the scenes yet um, also on air, you know, I've had this conversation a million times with Stuttering John about how he thinks it's kind of not fair that as an on-air personality, he doesn't get paid what a SAG or AFTRA type person would get paid, yet they have the rights to use all of your repeats as much as they want and you get nothing um, in return. Do you, do you think that there's something to that just in terms of... Um, Fairness? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you are a character on a TV show, right, a, a minor character on, say, even – or even a, a character that appears uh, from time to time, but maybe you're a medium-level character on, say, like, Everybody Loves Raymond, say, on a show like that, you get residual checks for the rest of your life. The people, right. the actors that are on The Simpsons, they don't even see their face. You hear their voices. They get residual checks for the rest of their life. So in radio in general, no, it is not fair uh, because, you know, TV, well, SAG and AFTRA has, have combined now. AFTRA is the radio um, union, but the radio union, like, covers the top 10 markets. Like, other than that, they don't give a fuck. Radio people as artists are treated very poorly. They're underpaid, and you do it just because you love it. Um, so yeah, I was under, but is is there, is there fairness with a man making $90 million a year and everybody else combined probably makes even like a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of, of his salary? Is that fair? I don't think so, but the world's not fair. So So, anybody, anybody that told you the world's fair, I'll idea. Oh no, nobody told me that. Um, (laughs) and so I have a question about Shuli. 
Okay. Because he has me blocked, and I don't know why, because I'd love to have him on the show. Um, what? Why Why was Shuli's whole thing, Brent is lying? Why the T-shirts? <laughs> why going on different like, TV things? Why was Brent lying? That was a great bit. I mean, it was a fantastic it was a bit. bit. It it's actually the bit. funniest thing I ever think he's done, to be honest with you. And uh, us going back and forth was funny, but um, I absolutely was not lying, which I've proved since over and over again. Uh, and <laughs> the thing is, <laughs> I've proved it since. Like, I've had on my show on Twitch and on Patreon, I've had four women that I've been with. Like, <laughs> it's, they've come on and described it. It's, 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 I, I absolutely wasn't lying. And you know how I wasn't lying? Uh, number one, because my wife would never allow it. She would never allow me to go on and say things about her and the things that she's done sexually if it weren't true. I would not be able to go home. So I absolutely wasn't lying. And talking to me about being fired, I can tell you, you know what, there is a way I can prove that I wasn't fired. I wouldn't be able to say it publicly. I wouldn't be able to say I wasn't fired publicly if that weren't true. That would, that would, well, that would. Talk. I think that you guys could have come to some, you know, I have fired many a person where I have uh, allowed them to use me as a reference and never say that they were fired, you know, just because it's nice business to, even though you like somebody, but they don't get along with, you know, the rest of your staff. Um, you know, and I've even allowed people to stay, you know, three weeks longer than they needed to because it's easier to get a job when you have a job than it is to get something when you don't. You I, know? Totally, I totally understand that. However, <laughs> I'll tell you that. So my last three, four jobs, uh, Howard's job and Bubba's job, uh, I left and was not fired. Uh, I was fired from Mary Lou Henner's show and I was not fired from KFI. I left. Why did you leave and go to L.A.? Why did you leave everything and go? And were you weirdly with that, like, kind of cultish dude who wrote those books? Like, what was the story there? Which 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 dude are you talking about? Neil Strauss? That, yeah, Neil Strauss. Exactly. Well, Neil Strauss is, is amazing. He is the best nonfiction American writer uh, alive today. He's, he's fantastic. If you read his books, they're insanely good. Uh, and he's a great writer. And he took my writing to just a whole nother level uh, and taught me really a, a lot about writing. And I was with him for, for a couple of months, but that's because Neil and I are really good friends. He said, hey, you want to come out to L.A. and uh, work in my office at my imprint? And uh, I was like, yeah, sure. And I got there and I was there a few months. And then the people that wanted to put, give Mary Lou Henner a show gave me a call. And we're like, hey, we need you to come teach her how to do radio. And I was like, well, this is what I do. So that's what I, I, I'm going to go. Now, why didn't that work out? For. Because I find her to be one of those fascinating, you know, she's one of the few people in the world who can remember everything since childhood. So I would think that that she's, in itself would be something that you can base an entire conversation off of. She is lovely and one of my favorite people on the entire planet. Like she is one of the most talented people I've ever met and one of the nicest people I've ever met. Uh, Mary Lou and I worked out great. Uh, the company that was producing the show, I'll just, I'll tell you straight up. I was making, uh, she was doing a three hour talk show from her house, but she wanted to do it all about health. I was making 90 grand doing that, which was okay. It wasn't great for LA. Um, but, no, it's not good for LA. <laughs> no. But yeah. it, it, but working with her was fantastic. It really was. Uh, so the the, the company, um, I got her on to about eleven radio stations, and for a female based talk show, that's really actually good. Yeah. The problem was she didn't want to talk as much about her show business stories, which are fantastic about you know it's taxi, one thousand percent what she should talk about. I mean, you know what? sometimes you got to stay in your lane. <laughs> Sorry, you just have to. Nobody gives a and, fuck about her health. Thoughts. Yeah, and, her, and she's amazing. Like she's over seventy years old, and she's in amazing shape. And she did teach me a lot about health. But a radio audience doesn't want to be preached to. So, no, if so people don't want to be preached to. They want to hear about her hanging out with Burt Reynolds and, and and being on Taxi with Christopher Lloyd and Andy Kaufman. Like that stuff. She would, if, at the end of the week off the air, she would tell me an Andy Kaufman story just to <laughs> just to satiate all my questions that I had for her. Uh, it was, so, then, it, it was so, then when you, so how long did you last out in L.A.? A year. I was there. I was with Neil Strauss for a few months, then Mary Lou Henner for about uh, six or seven months. And then uh, I started working at uh, Clear Channel when, or iHeart it is now. I started working at Clear Channel when I started talking to um, uh, the Stern Show and also the NFL Network to get a job there. Uh, Are you already wife, with Caitlin at that time? Yeah, she came. I, I I got we got together here in 2012, and she moved with me to LA. She moved with me to New York. 
Um, and she has been nothing but wonderful. Like when she met me, I had big dark circles under my eyes. I was depressed, fat, uh, and uh, more miserable than ever. And I was kind of, I kind of fell back in, in a few months here in, in, in Florida. I kind of fell back into that um, a little bit of a, a of alcohol haze and depression. Uh, but I have shaken myself out of it in the uh, in the last month, and I feel way better. So now I'm willing to come on. Like I, I can tell you, when you're not feeling good about yourself, and when you're feeling really horrible, you know, people saying horrible things about you really has an effect that it doesn't have when you're in the right headspace. And I'm in the right headspace and in the right mindset now. So I, I figured I'll talk to you. I'll talk to Sketchy. And if you, everybody wants to continue to hate me, that's perfectly fine. I just are you on? Um, are you on? Are you on uh, Zoloft or any serotonin uptakes? Hell no! I do not take prescription pills. I use okay. uh, I use psilocybin. I use magic mushrooms and uh, and weed. And uh, that's I've it. Cut, so so I've, you've cut out anything else? Do you drink a lot? Do you? I was. I was self medicate. I've cut it down. I've cut down the drinking down to maybe a couple of beers on Friday and Saturday, and uh, I stick to uh, edibles and mushrooms. Things that awesome. grow on the ground. <laughs> so. Awesome. Okay, so I think I've gotten to all the questions I wanted to ask you. Oh, I did have one more question. I'm sorry. Why do they call you Bort? Because I keep seeing it on my thread here, <laughs> and I'm just really curious where, uh, where Bort comes from. Well, it's something that they made up, but we don't put that joke on me. But the funniness <laughs> is, the funniness is I would get kind of um, testy and upset uh, at first when people would get my name wrong. A lot of people, like my whole life, is, have called me Brett. And I'm like, it's not Brett, it's Brent. Are you illiterate? And I would get yeah. kind of testy and upset about it. So it is funny to get me testy and upset about things. So that's why they do that. They call me every different, <laughs> every name, every wrong name they can call me, they call me that name. I think Board is kind of silly and cute, to be quite honest <laughs> with you. I think they really like that. Um, somebody was also saying that, um, actually, he, he's one of the people that's saying it right now, but um, that you were really fucked up yesterday, almost passed out on air. Can you talk about that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you. I was not really fucked up yesterday. <laughs> I was in a euphoric state of mind. I didn't almost pass out on air. What was happening was... What's that? Nothing. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? Uh, what? What was happening was I may or may not have had two women under the table. During the show? During the show. So you were getting serviced under the table maybe, whilst maybe you were not. on the show. <laughs> maybe, maybe not, but uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and these two ladies, like I said, they're in charge. There's no telling them no to anything. So you just have to kind of go with it. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Board is a sex god. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Fudgy Cole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you recognize a lot of people that are on here. Okay. So... If if Twitch isn't up by the end of the week, you're pretty much done with Twitch. You're going to have everybody come over to you on YouTube. And yep. you're starting the show on Wednesdays of Miserable Men with Bob Levy and Shuli and two other people whose names I didn't recognize. Uh, and Mark, Mark, Mark Burns and Mike Morris. So they're great guys, great comedians. Okay. And um, is Bob going to be on it full time as well? Like, is that gonna Oh, be yes. Oh, yes. So if you like the the Ronnie character or the Ned character, maybe even Ira, the weatherman that was on Jay's show, uh, Bob Levy is on fire like that. You know, he's gotten a little older. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but his filter is gone. If he ever had, oh yeah, it's I know, gone. Are you gonna Are you gonna have any kind of interactions with him? Because I know you guys are kind of diametrically opposed in terms of your um, politics. Like, is <clears throat> is there any of that? Yeah, well, we don't – the politics we don't really get into. Well, Bob and I, uh, weirdly enough, are kind of kindred spirits. Like I'm not politically correct, correct, incorrect like him, and I'm not really a, a, a Trump person like him. But, however, um, we do kind of have the same ideas about freedom and liberty and being a libertine and kind of everything is okay uh, sexually. So Bob and I kind of bond over that. Um, and the, kind of the two of us are kind of uh, the two idiots on the show kind of a little bit. So it's it's fun. So Bob and I interact, Julie and I interact, and we all bust each other's balls. It's really uh, savage and politically incorrect, and it's all those things that you, you probably love. Uh, we, we do all of that. Okay, awesome. So we'll look forward to that. And um, I think it would be really fun if you did sign up for the forum, um, do oh, an well. AMA on there. Absolutely. Um, people will ask you questions, and, you know, if anybody's going to be a dick to you, 
I mean, you know, they couldn't be any worse than what happens on your show. So <laughs> I, I can't Fantastic. even imagine. <laughs> all right. So yeah. So that's it. That's all I got for you. And I'm I'm thrilled that you came on. I'm I'm happy we were able to kind of talk shit out. Sure. I don't think it's gonna change anybody's mind, as you know, on either one of our shows. So um, but yeah, definitely I will promote what you guys are doing. I look forward to listening to Miserable Men and seeing what we think of it. And um, and then we'll look forward to whatever you guys choose to do on YouTube. And I'm sure your OnlyFans know your OnlyFans. I mean, oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, we're also, you know, these days we're on Patreon every day from six to eight, uh, doing a show there, which is more akin to what what was goes on serious because you can talk uh, openly and freely. But I want to just thank you for having a civil conversation today, because you've got very strong opinions, which is yes. completely allowed in America. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, you're allowed to have strong opinions, but I do appreciate you having a conversation with me. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, no douchebag. I mean, of course, I'm, I'm going to talk shit about you and put up, you know, pictures of you slightly retarded with your eye hanging down with your black child with Caitlin. That was one of the funniest things I ever put on uh, Reddit in my entire life. Um, but that doesn't mean we don't love you. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for coming on. I'm going to chat with my guys a little bit after you leave. And, um, and okay. we will see you soon on YouTube, I guess. Okay, have a wonderful night, uh, okay. and uh, have a wonderful night, everybody. If you like me or you hate me, uh, thank you for uh, listening to the show and giving me a chance to explain. All right, thanks for being a good sport, Brent. I appreciate okay. it. Okay, thanks, Monique. Have a great night. Take care. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys, so that's that. That's what I got. Um, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, I started the show with asking him you know, or saying to him that I think he's a little fat, surely. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I don't know. Just uh, I, I, I think I got to all your questions. I, I you know, I tried. I, I tried to get out what uh, whatever we could from the show, you know, whatever. So, yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. I know he's. He's 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 a little bit not as forthright as I would like somebody to be. I mean, that's why I think he probably would have made a great politician because he kind of circles around stuff a little bit and doesn't really get to the to it. So, you know, whatever. But that's on him. I think that. Um, listen, you know, let's be honest. I, I he's probably not going to be able to get back to Twitch. And um, and he's going to go on and promote wherever he thinks that there are fans that, you know, he may appeal to. So he came to me and we had a good conversation. So that's it. Um, yeah. So let's talk about it online. And I'm uh, I'm good with that. I'm really good with it being like a decent conversation with him I, and because I'm the only one on the show tonight I, I wasn't even really listening as much as I probably should have when he was saying things to us so uh, I'm going to listen back to this and then maybe we can talk about it on the uh, on the forum okay thanks for coming on and hanging with me um, thank you if you think I did do a good job and if I didn't I'm sorry that you feel that way but it was the it was the best we could do Okay, so here's the um, here's the intro that Bon Jovi made for us. It's pretty fucking fantastic. So take a listen to this, and thank you for um, playing with us tonight. I've been doing this over a quarter of a century. I know what opening this door meant. I know where these things go. She likes to fuck and move on. Ah, it's so hot. Yeah, the first day at boot camp was kind of pretty fucking rugged. A day that you couldn't handle, by the way. I have way too much respect for everybody that works on this show. It was more of a voyeur exhibitionist type thing. He thinks the whole world revolves around him. Uh, I'm probably about seven right now. You're there to find somebody to fuck. You're not looking for love. Sometimes I go to sleep dreaming about it. There are no questions. Just eat your humble pie like a man. Animals are great. They, they you know, they help you relax in a situation like this. So fucking steamy. So fucking steamy.